Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin for those of you that are new here and if you're not, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here today. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can work on your headstands. And with this inversion, I'll share with you both supported and your tripod headstand and how you can safely drill a couple of different things to get into the given pose. Now before we get started, I have gone through different trainings in terms of inversions. In my first training, I I was taught that the progression to invert is a headstand, forearm stand, then hand stand. In another training that I took, I was told that it's the absolute opposite, that you shouldn't be doing your headstands until you have confidently navigated through your hand stands. The process of thought behind that is if your shoulders, neck, your traps, if the musculature isn't developed enough to hold you in a hand stand, that you do not have enough musculature to safely support your body in a headstand, which I can see both trains of thought, both schools of thought. For me personally, I did accomplish my headstand first, but I can very much respect the idea of doing handstands before headstands. And I just wanted to share that little bit of information with you, either the progression from head to handstand or handstand to headstand. So just some things to keep in mind as we do work through supported headstand and our tripod headstand today. If you'd like to work on your headstands with me, then just keep watching. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Right now I am uploading videos every other day. So with that, let's get right into it. So first and foremost, if you take one thing away from today's video, it's do not ever do not ever jump up into your headstands. For the safety of your head and for your neck, there is absolutely no jumping in your head stands. Forearm stands, hand stands, totally different story. With your head stands specifically, please no jumping. When you think about it logically, your head is connected to your neck. And there's way too much opportunity for you to tweak your neck and cause injury. Instead, we build stability and maintain control. This way we can slowly lift up into the posture. I'll start today with a supported headstand. So it's worth you becoming aware of what exactly the crown of your head is. If you were to take your thumb and place it just in between your eyebrows, and I'm placing the webbing just across my forehead, wherever your middle finger lands, this point is where you want to bring to the floor. I see students resting either the forehead or even super close to the brows. So then their neck is in this super cranky and unhappy line. The neck should be long throughout the posture. So we're bringing the crown of the head to the floor. We're interlacing our fingers and creating space between the palms. We'll bring the pinky fingers down to the ground and then pull the hands away from one another. So you have this little pocket, that's where your head is going to go. With the crown of the head, that point that you just previously found with your middle finger pad, you'll bring that to the floor and notice that you're not rounding through the neck. The neck is long. Focus and feel into the shoulders. This entire time, your shoulders are down. At no point are you crunching into the sides of the neck. The neck stays nice and long. You can breathe and the shoulders are down. Pinkies to the floor, space between your palms, crown down, shoulders down. So those would be all of your initial check-in points. Let's start by tucking into the toes and straighten out the legs. From there, you'll start to get a little more comfortable with what it's like to bear weight on the crown of the head. But you guys, please check in. The pinky fingers, the wrists, the forms, even the elbows are pressing into the floor. Now with that initial pike up of your hips or lift up of your hips, often what will happen is the elbows, they begin to splay. At no point are the elbows wider than your shoulders. So constantly squeezing the elbows in towards your center line. When you bring your head down, just check in. What's happening with the elbows? Are they splaying? And can you still keep them in line with the shoulders? Super key. So in your supported headstand, your option one is to stay with the hips, inching, inching, inching over the shoulders, which are down and out of the ears. Double check with your periphery that your elbows are still walking in towards the midline, no wider than your shoulders. You build strength by lifting your hips up over the shoulders shoulders are still down. If you're looking to advance the posture, bend into one of your knees. Remember, no hopping, no jumping, both knees. 
squeezing your knees in towards your chest, draw your shoulders down. You might choose to stay with this little egg or tuck shape or lift one leg, but squeeze the other knee down, no rushing, pointing your toes up towards the ceiling, then maybe you find your full expression. If you find full expression, wrap the inner thighs in towards one another, point your toes up and drive your elbows down to the ground. Steady the gaze. And when you're ready to release from the posture, bending into one knee, bending into the other. One set of toes, both sets of toes. As you're progressing your practice, please be aware that through all of these advancements, you're still able to breathe. And as often as you would like to take rest in between it, the postures aren't going anywhere, so please just take rest as often as you would like to, especially when you're not working in a classroom setting, if you're doing self-practice at home, please just tread lightly and take care of yourself by taking rest, taking breaks as often as you would like to. Now, another key component is that you're not rushing and coming out of the posture super duper fast, and this will give your blood pressure the time to regulate. What you want to avoid is this like slingshot up of the head back above your heart space. So just keep that in mind when you are working on your own. Key points that you're focusing on, the interlace of the fingers, the spaciousness between your palms, shoulders always down and out of your ears. Recall the progressions that you're taking away. First option is to keep both feet on the floor and just work towards stacking your hips, hips above your shoulders. If and when you feel stable there, the shoulders can remain down, the belly can still breathe, consider working into that little egg or that tight little tuck shape in the body. When you find that little tuck shape, you feel really good. Again, the shoulders are down, the belly can still breathe. Then consider the next progression, which in this case would be your third progression. You lift up one leg or you lift up both legs. So then you would be in your full expression of supported headstand, Sirsasana A or Sirsasana 1. It's super crucial that with your headstands, majority of the weight, it's in your hands, your forearms, and your elbows. Mm. Another thought bubble that I'm having, often students will complain that there's too much pressure being placed on their head, and I totally get that. You can double fold your yoga mat, or you can use a blanket, but please don't get carried away with too much height, because then there's opportunity to roll the head in a funky way or twist the neck in a weird way. Another thing, if you're like, yeah, that's still not enough, what that means is you are not pressing in your hands or your forearms enough to take the pressure off of your head. You're bearing way too much weight on the head, not enough coming from the hands, arms, and shoulders. Even though it is a headstand, you still want your arms and your shoulders to be taking majority of the strength and force in the posture. If you're bearing all of your weight in the crown of the head, it's just not safe over time. So you want to negate that habit right away when you're drilling the posture and you're working on it on your own. In a perfect world, you would almost be able to hover your head or lift the crown of the head up because that's how much strength you're pressing with your elbows, forearms, and fingers. And then when you're lifting up, you're really focusing on a squeeze in the belly and squeezing your legs together. Not negating your toes, right? Your toes are still working and shooting upright. If you negate the toes, you're not utilizing all of your body awareness and all of the strength that your body truly houses. If you don't feel super steady yet and you're looking to work on the full expression, core strength or back bends can be great ways that you can build more strength to advance all the way into the posture. Two of my favorites, reclining down to the back. Extend your legs up to prepare, interlace your fingers, flip your palms, and then any amount you find your hollow hold. Press your low back into the floor, press out through the hands, point energy through the toes, the catch with your hollow holds, your low back is your anchor. So only lower the arms and the legs as low as the back can stay super glued down to the ground. Building core strength, and that will bring you more stability in your inversions. Back bending, super simple. It doesn't have to be anything deep. I enjoy a bridge pose. You can either hold static, hold the shape, or do it dynamically. The inhale lifts you, the exhale lowers you. Feel free to take that into a wheel, and you can do the same thing, either hold it static or do your wheel push-ups. Pressing into the palms, the inhale lifts you up, you can hold static, relax your butt, or you can do your push-ups. Pressing into the palms, 
and then gently hovering crown of the head. And both of those drills in terms of your core work and your spine strength, both of those will help to build immense strength to bring more stability and control into your supported headstand. To those of you that already have your supported headstand, you can do some other kind of drills. The first option would be single leg lowers where you hover one set of toes, keep the opposite leg lifted, and then you would slowly switch. Meet the bottom foot back to the top and then lower the top foot down. Do that with a point and move slow slower the better always with these drills because this is doing the same thing it's building shoulder strength building core strength and building spine strength to give you a more stable connection to the posture if and when the single leg lowers become relatively stable do that both legs at the same time so you pike the legs down point your toes do a little hover and then slowly lift the legs back up one more drill that I can share with you is a little twinkle toe or flipper feet, whatever it is that you like to call it. With the flipper feet or the single leg, even that pike to lower down, you want to think of the hips shifting beyond the shoulders and that will work deep into your core muscles. The crown of the head down, shift the hips forward and then hover the feet. Hover the feet. Hover the feet. Hover the feet. As the hips draw back, that might turn into one leg lift, both leg lifts. That might turn into the pike to lower, pike to lower. So there's lots of options in terms of shape shifting and things that you can explore with your headstand. What you want to avoid is any rounding into the upper back or crunching into the neck and shoulders. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please, for the safety of your head and your neck, no jumping, no hopping. Just do the work diligently and patiently. And I assure you that over time, you will make your way into the pose with success. One more variation that I would like to share with you is your tripod headstand. You can work all of those same drills. It's just a different placement with your hands. For me personally, I have always enjoyed tripod headstand more than supported headstand, but it's very much personal preference and you find what works for you in your practice. Tripod headstand can ultimately be more challenging because your base, it's not as wide. Instead of like your supported headstand where you have your hands, your forearms and your elbow points into the ground, in tripod headstand, it's simply the hands and the crown of the head. So your tripod is one, two, and three. Three points of contact, that's the foundation that you are balancing and inverting on. Peripheral vision is incredibly helpful here. When you place your two hands, your hands are no wider than your shoulders. So please take care and set your foundation as you are intending to balance on your hands and your head. So if the hands are too wide or the hands are too short, you are already setting yourself up to fail or to cause strain or possibly injury. So be super safe and just set yourself up to succeed. Bend your hands shoulder width. Notice the wrist creases. The wrist creases are parallel to your yoga mat that you're using. In my case, I'm just using lines on the carpet, that way I can gauge. My middle finger is pointing forward. There's no external rotation or internal rotation of the hands. I am bringing the crown of my head down, shoulders down. Entrance is exactly the same, just using the peripheral vision. Check in, no movement of the head, just use your eyes and you see all 10 of your fingers. If you can't, the stance might be too far width wise or too far forward. That is often a misalignment that I'll see. The hands and the head are in the same line, so there's no tripod. Hands back, head forward. Lift your hips up. You might choose to stay right here or find one leg lift, second leg lift. Squeeze the belly and draw the elbows in. Push your hands through the floor. One leg up, second leg up. Wrap the inner thighs in, point your toes, and breathe. Remember that when you exit the posture, it's slow, it's with control, there's nothing rush, there's nothing jarring. Give your blood pressure time to regulate. And once you find your preference of either supported headstand with the forearms down or tripod headstand with the hands down, you can work on those drills. Flipper feet, single leg lifts, double leg lifts. You can do some shape shifting like straddling on the way down, do bound angle or eagle legs. There's lots of things that you can play with. Essentially, the sky is the limit. You find what you like as long as you are safe no hopping, no jumping, and the shoulders, they stay down. If there's fear with inverting, I totally get that and I do respect that. And working in the middle of the room might not be super realistic. 
if you want, have a couch behind you, have wall space behind you, some sense of a security blanket. That way you can start to play with these inversions and have some fun. Full disclosure, falling out of the poses, it's just nature of the beast. And that's just me being totally honest with you. Tread lightly, be kind to yourself. If there's no hopping, if there's no jumping and no rushing, the fall is going to be a lot kinder and more gentle. Whereas if you were to jump up into the posture, there's a lot more momentum. So you are more inclined to then topple out of the posture in a way that you weren't anticipating or really ready for. If there's a little more control, you're moving slow and very deliberate. The toppling out of the posture generally is going to be far softer and you're not going to back body slam onto the ground. P.S. Inversions and backbends are very uplifting to your energy. So if you find that you're sensitive to those things, perhaps you do this earlier in the day. If you're doing this a little bit smarter than I am doing this right now. And with that, that's all that I have for you today. I do hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you learned a little something new. If you enjoyed, please like and share the video with a loved one or a friend, someone that would benefit or appreciate the video. I'm so happy to share all of this information with you and I hope that you enjoyed. Be kind to yourself be kind to others, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Wow, full disclosure, like I'm so out of breath after that. I've been huffing and puffing, I feel like like a crazy person. I need a moment, I need a moment. And not to mention 9.30 and I'm like back bending and doing inversions. Energy levels are going to be through the roof. Anyways. And subscribe to my channel. What's up? Hey! <laughs> okay. Love you. Love you too. Namaste. Same to you.